G'day, Nick from Australian Native Bee here. Today's video I'm very excited about because it's been a couple of years in the testing process. Back towards the end of 2016, I opened a log colony and inside the log colony I saw a flat sheet of honey pots with no pollen in it. And I wondered whether I could repeat this process. So I took measurements and started on working out whether I could build a vertical uh, honey collection area that could be easily removed from a hive. I had a couple of uh, failures there and that didn't seem to work so I thought of another idea. Uh, while I've been reluctant about making a video on uh, honey collection is because uh, honey collection from stingless bees often ends up with uh, a lot of dead bees. So uh, I don't want to be killing bees um, and honey harvesting is one of the things that does kill a few bees along the way. Uh, I thought about uh, our current honey supers and methods that we had and realized that uh, maybe if the height of the super was dropped to small super, uh, I would have some success. Um, so this is what I've come up with. This is a uh, what I call a series super. Um, the reason why I call it a series super is because you would put a series of these like this on your stingless beehive. They have a hole at the back and this goes towards the back of the colony and that's just because bees store pollen in their colony first. So if you have this reversed and have this on the front side where your hole is, you're gonna get pollen coming up through there. So that's the way it sits on the hive and you're not limited to how many of these you can put on your stingless bee colony. Uh, this is what uh, a series super looks like once it's full of honey and you can see that the bees have a clear gap underneath the honey pots there to move through so that enables uh, whoever's collecting the honey to blow those bees out of there with compressed air. Um, these are the first uh, series supers I've tested they're about 24 mil thick uh, but I have uh, tested actually my father tested one that was 35 mil thick and it worked quite well. Uh, the reason why uh, that's really exciting is that uh, in future those honey frames could be put into a conventional honeybee spinner and spun. So this is a, a frame, an old frame out of a Langstroth hive. It's about 35 mil thick across that point. So um, this is what a 35 mil thick series super looks like um, and yeah there are some refinements that need to be made to it something I learned uh, about is that the struts the connective struts on the top of the honey pot are actually stronger than the base struts you can see that this was actually sitting like this in a honeybee hive oh, there goes some honey and um, it's chosen to stick to the plate and I found that in all the ones that I removed that they preferred to stick to the top rather than the bottom so the top connective struts of stingless bee honey pots are stronger than the base connective struts. Uh, in future I think um, that there should probably be some uh, struts put across within the honey pots but uh, that's something we can look at later. So without further ado, let's have a look at uh, harvesting some honey from a series super. I hope you enjoy. This is a look at a series super on top of a stingless beehive. The top super will always be used for resin storage underneath the clear panel. So that super will always remain. Uh, don't screw your series supers down like I did here. That's a big mistake. What's up? So we're here. Uh, I've got a couple of things. This is the bowl I'm going to put the honey into. And this is a 
uh, one of those cross stitch things and this is just cheesecloth and that's just going to prevent any bees that uh, do get stuck in the honey to be able to crawl out off this so uh, let's have a go and look at extracting some honey so you can see there uh, how the honey comes out exactly like in a log um, it's not actually supposed to stick to that plate but uh, there's some refinements to be made obviously um, as you can see this is where the honey is supposed to sit so that was in there it's chosen they've joined it really well to there so I'm just going to use this little uh, pin board um, these are 30 mil spikes and I'm just going to poke these Now, if you want bees to fill things up quicker, you actually don't want to take all the honey pots. So you can see there that's ready to sort of run out. There are still some bees in there, but uh, they should be okay. So I don't know what's going to be under here or how it's going to pop open, but let's just have a look. All right, again, you can see just solid honey right through there. There are a lot of bees in this one. So I'll, I'll blow those bees out with, a, with an electric blower back towards the colony and harvest that after all the bees are out of it. It's just easier to get the bees out when you can see all around the, um, all around the honey pots and all the areas you can keep. Now here's something that you might have not seen with your stingless bees and that is candied honey. Candy honey is something that you see in apis bees or honeybees and right near these colonies is actually a, a honeybee colony. So I'd say that these stingless bees have been collecting from the honeybee colony and as a result you've got candied honey within these uh, series supers. So I haven't blown the bees off these yet, but I just wanted to open them all so that you can see what sort of um, uh, harvest, I guess, you're going to get. Um, so as you can see, pretty good amount. Okay, so this is the last part of the honey. I'm just going to squeeze it out into this bowl. A lot of people don't like using cheesecloth. Uh, for honey harvest because you get um, lint in your honey. I think in the about five or six frames that I pulled out there was one pollen pot. This is a look at the product you will get from harvesting honey uh, this way. So I hope this helps people in future to Think of ways that we can harvest honey without killing our stingless bees.